Let's play a game. Soon Earth will be attacked by 15 otherworldly beings and it's your job to stop them. With the power of one giant robot, you and 14 other pilots will fight them off. It's a simple game with a simple concept. And upon hearing this, these kids eagerly join in one after the other. Skip forward to a little bit later and that's when it happens. The very monsters and mechanisms of destruction said to be found in the game come to life and it's here when these kids realize this supposed game they all signed up for was in reality a sentence to their own deaths. Bokurano is a tragedy from start to end. It's about a group of unfortunate kids tasked with saving the world by fighting off monsters of varied forms and appearances. But that's not the worst of it. It's not the fact that these are kids being sent to the battlefield. It's not the fact that Earth will be destroyed if they fail. It's the fact that in order to pilot this mecha, these kids have to sacrifice their own life force. With every monster that appears, one child must die so that the mecha can function. That's just the nature of how it was built. Essentially, this mecha can only move if someone expends his or her life in the process. And so every monster that appears and is eventually defeated inadvertently leads to the death of one out of the 15 kids burdened with this great ordeal. That's a truth that's really hard to grasp, really hard to come to terms with, knowing fully well that your life is over and no matter what you do, you will die. A sense of dread that's further propelled by the reality that whatever future these kids may have had, whatever connections they may have made, will all turn to dust in the battlefield. And yet, it's precisely this reality that makes this manga as compelling as it is. Right from the start, we're quickly made aware of the unforgiving stakes at play. These are kids who have no choice but to fight because if they don't, their world will be erased in the blink of an eye. But at the same time, no one can really blame them if they don't because they're literal kids who've never gotten to live out their youths. Bokurano takes this foundation and utilizes it to explore how the different characters react and respond to their given scenario. Some lose their will to live, some resolve themselves to lead a righteous path, and others lie somewhere in between. And it's this variety of characters and their individual perspectives that makes each interaction feel meaningful. It allows all the fights to have weight and invoke some sort of emotion. Whether it be sorrow, pity, or respect, there's something there to latch onto. That being said, honestly, I don't think the fights themselves are all too interesting. There were times for me personally where it was difficult to make out what was happening and the fight choreography in my opinion could have been better handled. But how Bokurano makes up for these downsides is through the prelude to these fights. It's through seeing the individual stories of all the kids and how they each come to terms with their inevitable deaths. The characters are what make Bokurano worth reading, and it's also its greatest strength as well as its greatest weakness. As readers, for us to care, the story needs to get us to invest ourselves into its characters. But because of the nature of Bokurano's premise, there's this inherent urge to do the opposite, to not invest ourselves, to not care. After all, why should we when we know there is no happy end? At least not for these kids. Well, the answer to that question is shown in the chapters dedicated entirely to their mental states and personal struggles. You've got characters dealing with trauma, loneliness, abandonment issues, and so on and so forth. Moji, for example, I couldn't help but respect because of how selfless his final moments were. He was someone who initially started off with selfish intentions, but in the end, went out in the most noble way possible. He accepted his death, and more than that, he used it in such a way where he saved another life that could not have been saved unless it was in these very specific conditions. And this is only one out of the many perspectives that we get to explore. Daichi, Nakama, Anko, Maki, Komo, and a whole lot more are all names that mean nothing by themselves. But by seeing their backstories and how they mature as the weight of the world rests atop their shoulders, we're able to connect with their respective journeys. Some more so than others, but regardless, the point remains. The manga actually gets weirdly philosophical at times, and there's actually an entire chapter centered around two clashing ideals. The idea that everyone is valued equally during death and the idea that we as people value death differently depending on who has died. For example, I'd react a whole lot differently if my mom died than if some random nobody died. 
Another thing I think is pretty cool is when the manga focuses on how the world changes as a byproduct of the mecha battles. The military gets involved, cities are decimated, and public backlash reaches an all-time high. We get to see how the government tries to combat these supernatural entities from distant worlds and how the families are affected. The batch of chapters focused on the aftermath of the kids' families, for example, were some of my favorites. It was also the mystery surrounding the opposing forces and what exactly they were which had me engrossed in how the story would unravel. Bokurano isn't a manga you want to read if you're looking for lighthearted fun, but if you can stomach it, then it's one that might stick with you. Subscribe, comment, like, and I'ma catch y'all in the next one. Peace.